Hi everyone and welcome, this is the Apostate Prophet. Last weekend I was sitting at the barber and we talked a lot about religion and how Islam is worse than the others. Uh, probably that's why he cut my hair this way and made me look like a Syrian refugee who is also a Nazi. <laughs> you could also say that I have an egg instead of a head, that's fine, whatever you find funny. Anyway, I'm gonna talk about something serious. Jihad. Why am I talking about this? Yes, because uh, moderate Muslim apologists and their Western allies keep telling people that it is totally misunderstood. That jihad means only inner struggle and striving. Some are a tiny bit more honest and uh, admit that it also stands for fighting in the way of uh, Islam and Allah. But then they lie again and say that the purpose is only self-defense. If you have a look at the early spread of Islam, you must be pretty stupid to believe that. But some in the West just accept baseless claims by Muslims because the poor Muslims are oppressed by the evil white man. It really is no debate that requires much intelligence and wisdom, but I'll step on this side of the discussion anyway. Let's talk about the meaning first. The term jihad comes from the word for struggle or effort. That means that people who claim it's just struggle are not entirely wrong. The word is indeed struggle and effort, but that's not all. Of course you can just take the literal meaning of the word jihad and, re and reject any kind of factual criticism of the concept of Islamic holy war, but that would be ugly and dishonest. The term stands for much more than what a totally stupid campaign once claimed it does. The word jihad is used in the Quran 34 times in different forms in 30 verses and is used almost in all cases in terms of physically fighting for Allah or helping the cause of Allah with their wealth. In some verses the word is a generalization of jihad which can mean fighting or proselytizing. In some cases, in the minority of cases, it is just about being faithful and patient. If we look at some examples where the word is used, we can pick the following. Not equal are those believers remaining at home other than the disabled and the mujahideen who strive and fight in the cause of Allah with their wealth and their lives. Allah has preferred the mujahideen, those who uh, make jihad, through their wealth and their lives over those who remain behind by degrees. And to both Allah has promised the best reward, but Allah has preferred the mujahideen over those who remain behind with a great reward. This is chapter 4, verse 95. Another example, chapter 61, verse 11, is It is that you believe in Allah and His Messenger and strive in the cause of Allah with, a, with your wealth and your lives. That is best for you, if you should know. Another example of jihad in the sense of fighting is O Prophet, fight against the disbelievers and the hypocrites and be harsh upon them, and their refuge is hell and wretched is the destination. And a final example is, the ones who have believed, emigrated and striven in the cause of Allah with their wealth and their lives are greater in rank in the sight of Allah, and it is those who are the attainers of success. All these verses that I just took as an example are examples where the word jihad is literally used for fighting in the cause of Allah. So the word jihad is used in the Quran, in the most important book, the source of Islam as fighting in the way of Allah. And yet we have moderate Muslims and self-loathing people in the West who want to tell us a different narrative. Even though the scholarly consensus in Islam is very clear, jihad is fighting in the way of Allah. If you want to look at some other uh, examples, we can look at the Quran and see how this jihad was ordered in practice. I would begin with what I think is the most horrible Quran verse. Chapter 5, verse 33. Indeed, the penalty for those who wage war against Allah and His Messenger and strive upon earth to cause corruption is none but that they be killed or crucified, or that their hands and feet be cut off from opposite sides, or that they be exiled from the land. That is for them a disgrace in this world, and for them in the hereafter is a great punishment. This is the most horrible verse in the Quran to read for me. It is disgusting. 
In verse 5 of chapter 9, there is another example that we can look at. It is, And when the sacred months have passed, then kill the polytheists wherever you find them, and capture them, and besiege them, and sit in wait for them at every place of ambush. But if they should repent, establish prayer, and give zakat, let them go on their way. Indeed, Allah is forgiving and merciful. So, the polytheists are to be killed in this case, unless they convert to Islam. Another example is in uh, chapter 9 again, verse 29. Fight those who do not believe in Allah or in the last day, and who do not consider unlawful what Allah and his messenger have made unlawful, and who do not adopt the religion of truth from, from those who were given the scripture. Fight until they give the jizya willingly, while they are humbled. This is one of my favorite verses, by the way. Another example is chapter 2, verse 244. It says, And fight in the cause of Allah, and know that Allah is hearing and knowing. And finally, chapter 4, verse 101. And when you travel throughout the land, there is no blame upon you for shortening the prayer, especially if you fear that those who disbelieve may disrupt or attack you. Indeed, the disbelievers are ever to you a clear enemy. This verse actually says that disbelieving makes you a clear enemy according to Islam. The word used in this Quran verse is kafara and is a general term for all those who disbelieve. It has little to do with historical context. Yes, it is very clear. Jihad means striving or struggling. But in the Islamic context, in the Quran, it is uh, vastly used as fighting in the cause of Allah. There shouldn't even be a discussion about this. In the Islamic sense, jihad means fighting for Allah. If you want to have a short look at what making jihad an obligation for believers can cause, you can again look at this map. <laughs> the early conquest and the spread of Islam. It, it, it is very clear. At this point, we have not talked about whether war is always or mostly offensive or defensive in Islam. That's another point where people tell us baseless stories to deceive the caring Western person. But I want to save that topic for another video. I think this is enough for now. Oh, before I let you go, um, when we talk about jihad, of course, there is also the obvious that we need to talk about. Related to jihad is... 72 virgins. Virgins, according to the Quran, are full-breasted women, created by Allah only for the pleasure of those Muslims who enter paradise. The Quran describes them as follows. Indeed, we have produced the women of paradise in a new creation, and made them virgins, devoted to their husbands and of equal age, for the companions of those who are right. In another part of the Quran, it, it says, Indeed, for the righteous is attainment, gardens and grapevines, and full-breasted companions of equal age, and a full cup. No ill speech will they hear therein, or any falsehood. Wah, wah, wah. So, uh, the Quran promises sex slaves. Here is also a hadith that says that every believer will have two virgins in heaven. Narrated by Abu Huraira, the Prophet said, The first batch of people who will enter paradise will be glittering like the full moon, and the batch next to them will be glittering like the most brilliant star in the sky. Their hearts will be as if the heart of a single man, for they will have neither enmity nor jealousy amongst themselves. Everyone will have two wives from the Huris, who will be so beautiful, pure and transparent, that the marrow of the bones of their legs will be seen through the bone and the flesh. What nice fantasy, isn't it? But that's not enough. Two virgins for uh, every Muslim is uh, not all. Martyrs in the way of Allah, those people who make a jihad and fight and die in the cause of Allah, will have more. The authenticity of 72 virgins is often argued. But here is a hadith that many moderate Muslims want to ignore. The following hadith has been accepted by Islamic scholars as a strong evidence. The Messenger of Allah said, There are six things with Allah for the martyr. He is forgiven with the first flow of blood he suffers. He is shown his place in paradise. He is protected from punishment in the grave. Secured from the greatest terror, the crown of dignity is placed upon his head. And its gems are better than the world and what is in it. He is married to seventy-two wives along Al-Huril Ain of paradise, and he may intercede for seventy of his close relatives. The important part here is that the martyr is married to 72 wives in paradise. 
So whatever you might hear from some moderate Muslims or others, um, the 72 virgins deal is real. It exists in Islam. It is not a silly mocking campaign by hateful Islamophobes like myself. <laughs> And I will make a video about this very specific topic and I will discuss it much wider than here. I know I left Islam but uh, I made sure before I left Islam that I will still have the 72 virgins in heaven in case I die in any way for the cause of Allah or against, I don't know. To be very serious, if, if, if men need to be promised sex slaves in heaven in order to believe in this religion, if believers are told that they should fight physically for the cause of Allah in order to uh, receive 72 virgins in heaven, then there is something terribly wrong with this religion. To say it in other words, I want to quote Bill Maher here beautifully. He said, uh, promising pussy in heaven is the lowest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> so please everyone if you see this if you watch this if you hear me please hear my voice don't do jihad don't wish for sex slaves stay away from islam thanks for watching if you like my content and if you like this video please don't forget to like and to subscribe and to share this video you can also follow me on social media i'm very active on uh, instagram and on twitter I also have a Patreon page where you can support me, where you can sign up very easily and support me on a monthly basis for just a tiny amount like a dollar or two or five or ten, whatever you want. So please consider supporting me on Patreon so you can be a part of this and help me grow this and uh, expose Islam for what it is. I will be back with much more very soon. Thank you for watching again and have a nice day.